welcome back to my channel. This is Erica with Confessions of a Homeschooler. If you are new, thank you for joining me. If you are a returning viewer, you're probably wondering what is going on with my hair. And since it's fall, I really just always am looking for kind of a change in fall. And either I usually trim my hair or I color my hair. And so this time I decided to color my hair. I just wanted something a little bit darker and richer. So I like how it turned out. Um, I do want to go back and have her put some uh, golden like highlights in it just to kind of give a little bit more brightness. But otherwise, kind of excited for a new look. Anyway, that's what's going on with me. Let's get on to today's project. So I have been wanting a little pouch that I can put all of my knitting supplies in that I need for pretty much every project I do. And so I've created this little kind of carry-all pouch for all of my knitting notions. You could also use this for sewing or embroidery or anything like that. Anyways, it's really cute, super easy to put together. Probably only took me about an hour or so to put together, so it was really super easy, fun project, and I thought I would share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and get started on making this. So supplies for this project are super simple. You're gonna need some fusible fleece, some fabric for the outside, some lining fabric, some fabric for your pocket, some binding fabric, a couple of little strips to bind the pockets, a few little extras, um, again for the pockets, a small strip of just cotton batting or fleece for your pin holder, and then you'll need a few pieces of this clear um, vinyl. This is just lightweight vinyl. You can get it at any craft store. You'll also need a self-healing mat, a rotary trimmer, and some kind of clear acrylic ruler. And then, of course, you'll need your sewing machine and a coordinating thread. I will link all of the products I'm using in the description box below, as well as all the measurements for this project. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to start off with uh, just kind of the easy stuff, get that out of the way. And so the first thing I'm going to do is fuse my fusible um, fleece to the outside of our bag. And you're just going to want to do that following the manufacturer's uh, instructions. You can tell which side is the fusible side. It's a little bit lumpy feeling. Um, and so you'll just iron that on to your uh, back side of your outside of your bag. So the pretty side is up and then you'll have the fusible fleece on the back side. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll meet you back here. Okay, I have secured my fusible fleece to my outer and I just used a nice warm iron and just pressed for about 10 seconds all over just to make sure that it was here. So we can go ahead and set this aside now. Okay, now we can work on the inside of our bag. So what we're gonna do first is just kind of get everything laid out where we want it. And that's just to make sure that we've got things kind of organized and we like the colors and the layout and whatnot. So two of the plastic pockets, the three and a half inch deep ones go over here. The one that's only three inches deep goes right here. And we're gonna be putting some binding across the top of all of those just as decorative. And then these, two, uh, we're gonna close up those sides and this side as well with some binding pieces. All these measurements are below. So let's go ahead and do that first. Now just really quickly, I wanted to show you up close. To prepare these little binding strips, I just folded my strip in half and ironed, and then I folded the edges into the center folded it in half again and ironed, and that way you don't have any raw edges. So when you go to put your plastic in there and then sew along the edges, you don't have any raw edges. So I'm gonna do that to um, both of the sides of our three and a half inch uh, tall pockets. Okay, now for the bottom, if you'll notice, I wanted to make sure that we had a finished seam. So this piece is actually a quarter of an inch longer than the pocket, and that is so that we can just fold over this edge one quarter of an inch. So that way when we put this in here, we will have a finished seam on this edge right here. Now for the tops of the two pockets that we just finished, I went ahead and prepared the um, top binding basically the same way. So I folded in one quarter of an inch on one edge. You don't need to do this edge because it will be caught in the side seam. So just fold it in on a quarter of an inch on one, then fold both pieces to the center and fold in half and press. And I did that for both of these. And then we're just going to place this inside here like so and then stitch this on down the top as well. 
and just make sure that the side lines up a little better than I have it right now. And we're gonna do that to both of the three and a half inch tall pockets. Okay, now we're going to prepare the other clear pocket. This is the three inch tall clear pocket. Um, this time I'm gonna be using this fabric on the right side and then this on the top because it's gonna be on top of a blue pocket and I just wanted it to blend in. Um, you do not need to fold in the edges, uh, the top or bottom edges on this because it will be um, hidden in this one. So just fold it in half, fold it on the sides and fold it in half like that. Same thing with this one, exactly the same way we did our other ones. Uh, you only need to fold in this right side edge, fold, press it in half, and then press in your edges to meet in the middle, and press it in half. And so I'm gonna sew on the side one first, and then also on the top. Okay, so here are our three pockets. We've got the bottom right, the top right, and then the bottom left. And we can go ahead and just set these pockets aside for now. Okay, the next thing we're gonna prepare is our um, inside um, pocket. And I just took it, pressed in a quarter of an inch on this right side, and then pressed it again this way. We're just gonna run a stitch all along here and down this side just to seal up the pocket and give it a finished look. The rest of it will get caught in our seam allowance when we sew our binding on. Okay, now we're ready to start kind of assembling the inside of our bag. So we're gonna take our fabric pocket and place it in this lower corner down here. And we're going to line up the raw edges of the pocket with the edge of uh, fabric here. We're also gonna take our three inch pocket and place it on top of that. Again, lining up the raw edges here. Then these pockets are going to be lined up this way. There's our bottom one. And then our top one gets placed right here approximately. So you just need enough space up here for your binding so you can get in and out of this pocket and in and out of this pocket. So here's where you can kind of get creative. You can decide how big you want your pockets to be. So for me, I am going to go over and run a stitch down the side of this to secure this pocket, the, down the side and across the bottom to secure this pocket. And then I think I'm gonna leave this top pocket, um, just one big pocket. I think for this bottom one, I'm also going to run a stitch down the center to give me two smaller pockets. Then for this pocket, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna uh, save, uh, I'm gonna put this one on last because I want some places for my knitting needles and pins and things. So I'm going to run over to my machine and probably do a stitch about every inch and a half or so, so that I have room for kind of tall, sharper type objects in there. And then I'm going to place this on top and then I'll do a stitch all the way down the side and then I'll probably just leave this pocket hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch those down. You can kind of make it look however you want. So the last thing to do is to add our little needle holder here and so I'm just gonna stitch around the edge and I may even use a dark blue stitching just so that it kind of pops a little bit and matches with the dark blue I have going on. But of course you can arrange these pockets however you want. You can give yourselves several little pockets. You can leave them all um, whole, totally up to you. Okay, so here is what the pocket is so far looking like. I've got, this one is just attached on this one right side here. And then I did uh, strips every one and a half inches on that pocket. I did a strip down the middle of this one. And then I left this one whole. And then I just used some navy to add on my little needle keeper here. And then we're going to take our outside of our bag that we put the fusible fleece on. And we're just going to lay this whole thing right on top of there. And then all I'm going to do is just draw a line or make a crease basically right down the middle of this. And I'm going to stitch down the middle of this just to secure 
the outside to the inside and then the rest of it will be secured once we put on the binding I just don't want it going all over the place if you want you could also um, run a little basting stitch around the edges but I don't really think it's necessary so I've run a strip down the middle I'm just gonna set this aside for now the next thing we're gonna prepare is our binding and our ties so I like to get all my ironing done kind of at the uh, same time so that's what I've done here so to prepare the ties you just fold in one of the edges not both just one a quarter of an inch and we're preparing this exactly the same way we prepared the binding for the pockets each of the edges in towards the center folded it in half and pressed it and that way we won't have any loose edges and then the next thing I'm gonna do is take this to my sewing machine and just start right here and just sew along this edge and then down this edge to seal it up if you'd like you can sew along this other edge just to kind of give it a more symmetrical look totally up to you you can leave this edge over here raw because it's going to get caught in our binding to prepare our binding strips all I did was cut my fabric and fold it in half and iron it and that's all I did to prepare this it's ready to be sewn on so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up our little ties here really quick and then we'll be ready to assemble the binding and we'll be almost done Now this can be a little bit fiddly. You may need a uh, stiletto just to kind of push it through to get you started. Just take your time. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, we've got the inside of our pocket attached and we're going to flip it right side out and we're going to take our little ties that we just created and we are going to place the raw edge of the tie approximately you can kind of just eyeball the center but approximately four and a quarter inches down and then just secure it with either a pin or a wonder clip so this is the finished edge that we uh, folded in this is the raw edge and then you're going to do the same thing to the other side and I'm just gonna make sure mine has the stitching going both on the top or the bottom, whatever it is, just probably be consistent. Okay, now whenever I start adding binding, I like to do it somewhere where it's a little bit less inconspicuous. So I usually do it maybe in the middle on the bottom or along one of the sides, somewhere you're just not gonna really notice a seam all that much. Uh, but it's totally up to you, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm doing is I've got my binding strip, it's folded in half, and I've got the raw edge of the binding and I'm just lining it up with the raw edge of the inside of my bag. And I'm just gonna do a uh, quarter of an inch stitch. I'm gonna do a back stitch right here. Just so it's secure. And then we're going to sew a quarter of an inch. Now we are coming to our corner here. So I'm going to stop approximately one quarter of an inch away from this edge. I'm going to slant my project just slightly and back stitch at a little bit of an angle just to kind of secure that corner and cut my thread. Lift up and then we're going to turn our project and if you've seen me uh, do any of my quilts this is exactly how I bind my quilts. So now we're going to take this and fold it so that it is exactly straight with this other edge and then down and I'll show, show you this on all four corners. Okay, and then we're just going to continue. I do a little back stitch there. We're just going to continue going around. Okay, now I'm coming up to my first handle here. I just want to make sure it's straight and that it's in my stitch. Okay, and just keep going. Okay, again, Stop one quarter of an inch away from the edge. Do a little diagonal here and back stitch a couple times. Cut your thread, pull it out. And now we've turned our project so our binding is going this way. We are going to try and do it over here so you can see better. Flip it so it's going straight up and down this way. And I just kind of finger press it a little bit but then the raw edge is straight along with the raw edge of where you're going. And then I just put my finger there and just pull it straight down so that basically you have this little kind of flap, okay? And then we're going to just keep on sewing.
Okay, now I'm going to stop so that um, we have some room to join these two pieces. So I'll take this over to the cutting board and show you how I do that. So here is where my other one stopped and started. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick a spot that I want this to end at. And actually I think it is gonna end right here on the white. And I'm gonna get one of my rulers and just trim this off. And it doesn't need to be a specific measurement at this point or anything, just enough room that you can kind of work with it. And I just want a straight edge. Okay, so there's that one. And I'm going to lay this one on top of it and I just need them to overlap by a quarter of an inch. And just make sure everything's kind of, cause it's a little stretchy, right? Pulled tight. So I'm just going to finger press this at approximately of a quarter of an inch overlap here. It's probably hard to see on camera, but my one ends right here. And so I'm actually eyeballing it, but you could totally measure it. And I'm just gonna put a little mark there and then I'm gonna cut this one off at that mark I made. Okay. So now these should be overlapping by a quarter of an inch. And let me pick some of these stitches really quick. I picked back some stitches so I have a little bit more room to work. And then what we're going to do is just lay these together, right, uh, with their raw edges together, and then unfold them. And there are lots of ways to do binding. This is just the easiest for small projects like this. Then I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and just sew a quarter of an inch down the edge there. And then we can finish attaching our binding. Okay. Okay. So now we have stitched these little edges together and it should lay nice and flat on your project. And I just go ahead and finger press these open just so there's a little bit less bulk there. Now we can go ahead and finish attaching the binding to our project. So now we have our binding attached all the way around and the next step is to flip our project over and pull our binding around the back side. And now we are just going to do the exact same thing, sewing all the way around the outside. And I just kind of tuck these little loose threads. If they're really long, I'll cut them off. Um, if they're not too bad, then I'll just tuck them inside the binding. And I just kind of grab it and pull it around as I go. Okay, now we're coming up to this first corner, so I just kind of flip it out. Okay, so it was kind of like this before, and I just flip it around, kind of poke that corner down in so it's out of my way. And the first thing I'm gonna do is flip up the bottom and just kind of hold it and then fold over this side. And so you have like a little mitered corner here, and then I just kind of hang on to that. As I go into my corner here, sometimes I'll do one little back stitch just to secure it. Leave my needle in the down position, turn my work, and keep going. So here are the insides, super cute. I've got a pin in here that I use all the time, some extra knitting needles, my cable needles. That's my little uh, crochet hook slash knitting needle fix it, fix it tool. Um, I've got my little uh, needle gauge up here, a ruler uh, down here, and then some stitch markers over in here, some scissors, and then I have just a little needle uh, keeper up here. 
All right, guys, so that is my knitting tool supply caddy. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Super fun and easy to make, even if you're a beginner sewer, I think you can put this together quite quickly and easily. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do like tutorials like this, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to keep making more. If you have a specific type of tutorial you'd like to see, leave that in the comments below as well, and I will take those into consideration. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video, and I will see you next time. Bye.